speaking about love, um, how did you two meet? How old were you? And when you met, did you know who he was and who his father was? We were set up on a, I was in my early 20s, and we were set up on a, a blind date. And certainly I think that obviously, um, well, we had talked on the phone for about a month beforehand and felt, uh, you know, a certain connection with each other. And then we both agreed to meet. So I knew who his, his father was, but, you know, I, I was from Florida and we were, we hadn't grown up here in Atlanta and throughout all of that. But um, I always say, which is true, that I quickly realized that he was the best man I had ever met. And uh, I obviously <laughs> want to want to concur with her. Uh, she <laughs> was the, the she was the greatest woman uh, in, in what I'm saying. I mean, I want to I want to <laughs> compliment. Uh, but I, you know, sometimes it takes men lo- a long time to come through through things. There were some things in her that reminded me of my mom from day one, and you know, it wasn't that she was. Uh, they say that men often are looking for women like their mothers, if their mothers are are, are impactful to them. And obviously, you know, my mom was larger than life for me. Um, April 8th of 1968, my father was killed April 4th. April 8th, we went to Memphis. My mother took the older children, my brother, who was younger than me, Dexter, and my older sister, Yolanda, uh, to Memphis. My younger sister, Bernice, did not go. And she led a march that my father uh, was intending to lead or was supposed to have led had he lived. And what makes that so incredible was no one had been captured for the murder of our father at that time. It was a very dangerous, potentially dangerous decision. But mom made that decision and wanted to expose us as her children uh, to to you know, I, I, I mean, she had the strength of, I, I mean, I, I don't know many men who after losing their or any, uh, their wives in a situation like that would have been able to go and continue in that tradition. That only says to me that she was fortified with the movement in her heart that I, I must, you know, I must do this. And then, of course, we came back the evening of April 8th from Memphis, Tennessee, after she'd led that march with the the three older ones of us. And we had the funeral the next day, April 9th. So, you know, my mom was, to me, larger than life. And when I met Andrea, I saw many of those qualities uh, in her. And she was younger than me, quite uh, a number of years (laughs) younger. But she was older than me in a sense. You know, men of like little boys. We don't, all, we don't ever grow up. We always silly. We, you know, uh, and she was very serious and she, she knew where she wanted to go even in her twenties. And I, I was still meandering trying to figure out well, where, where am I going to go? Okay. And so once we met and became, you know, marriage is two people attempting to become one and there, there could be tension. There should be constructive tension, uh, and it, it's wonderful when it's constructive tension, uh, because again, you're you're trying to become one, and you also, you know, you also have to be friends because sometimes in any relationship, it may get difficult, but that friendship, along with that being in love and that love, sustains you during those times where it might be a little difficult. So, you know, I I just feel so blessed to have. Andrea, uh, in my life. And I, I'm not sure, you know, what I would have done if I had not met her. Uh, and the more I live with her more every day, I realize that even more, uh, just how important she is to me and to Yolanda and to us as a family unit. It's, I mean, we, we are a unit. Um, and, uh, you know, all of us try to bring something to the table, but in, in a real sense, she is our rock of Gibraltar. And let me say this, uh, since 
throughout our meeting, uh, let's see, I have, I've lost a grandfather, a grandmother, a mother, a sister, and cousins. And one of the qualities that Andrea has is when we, you know, when we're going through trauma and tragedy, particularly losing a loved one, she is, you know, she doesn't break down. Some women and some men, but some people would just break down. I, they couldn't handle it. But she becomes extraordinarily strong and supportive. And it's rare that you find qualities in p- human beings like that who can stand up in dignity and, 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 and with elegance. I mean, she's so elegant to be able to, to support. And when I went through those, you know, tragedy. She was right here with with me, and it made it. It's not easy to ever lose a loved one, but it made it easier. And most recently, we lost her mother, and I was tried to be there for her. Uh, that was the first on her side, uh, who was very very close, because she was extraordinarily close. Um, my mother in law to her daughters as well as to her granddaughter. And so that was a difficult one for all of us. But I I hope I was strong for Andrea, but I don't know that I have been as strong as she's been for me. Uh, It has been nothing short of remarkable uh, to go through these very tragic times and have my wife and partner with me 